Joining me right now is former prosecutor Jeremy Salan. Uh, Jeremy, uh, great to see you. I mean, this is unique. I mean, this this could be the very first time, you know, the public has seen the brothers appearing in court since, you know, their conviction uh, nearly, you know, 30 years ago. How impactful might that moment be for their argument? I don't expect tomorrow to be that impactful because remember, this is really just a status date where all our I's dotted and T's crossed, whatever motion or applications have been filed, are we ready to go for that December uh, uh, hearing? So tomorrow, maybe you hear from them, probably not. Maybe you get some color from the judge as to the judge's thinking one way or another, showing his hand a little bit. But I expect tomorrow is just preparing us and getting ready for that potential resentencing. Mm. Uh, the outgoing Los Angeles District Attorney has recommended the brothers be resentenced. Um, is it your belief that's largely because of renewed interest through, you know, the documentary, movie, or even the letter, you know, written by one of the brothers to his cousin that is now being more, you know, closely scrutinized, uh, implying, you know, that there was abuse uh, by the father? Yeah, you know, we don't we don't govern by reality TV, and we don't see due process by Netflix. So, is it helpful in the sense that it may have turned an eye or opened an eye, shed light on a, on a serious case with some evidence that may be worth exploring? Absolutely, that's going to be relevant. And we heard from the now outgoing DA. Maybe that in part was political. I don't know. But a judge is going to look at this at the four corners of the law and say, hey. Was, was it improper to preclude that sexual abuse evidence in the second trial? Is that, that letter um, you know, to, from Eric to his cousin relevant and important? And then lastly, and, and equally important, we hear about the band Menudo and one of those boys claiming that their father, Lyle and Eric's father, had molested them as well. All of this comes into play. Well, maybe we should review and re reconsider a sentence here. Mm -hmm. So now what about the new DA? I mean, the outgoing DA had one set of uh, you know, ideas. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I guess a new look at a case that's more than 30 years old. But what about, I guess, any pressure uh, that the new DA may feel about um, re-prosecuting potentially this case? Yeah, I, I, hearing him speak, uh, Hockman, DA Hockman, hearing him speak, I didn't get the impression he felt pressure. I felt he was saying, you know, I'm going to explore this and give it all the opportunity and all the eyes and, and review the evidence and review the testimony, even talk to witnesses, and I'll do my due diligence and do his job. And I think that is a right response. I don't know where he's going to fall, but in the end, it's important to recognize, even theoretically, he says, no, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. What can a judge do? A judge can still say, we're going to resentence. I'm going to parole yeah. these people. I'm going to make a change on his own, even over the objection of the prosecution, should they go that route. Yeah. Okay, so perhaps kind of reminiscent of the court days involving O.J. Simpson or even Michael Jackson. Tomorrow's hearing, you know, will be a rather big event, right, for a lot of people there. Um, there's, it's stirred up a lot of interest. Uh, lottery tickets are now available for 16 seats. So how... <laughs> Does that potentially influence proceedings? I think it doesn't. I think you look at a good judge and you look at the court and you would hope and believe that now how many people are saying and excited about seeing what's going to happen, now how many people are, are influenced for right or wrong uh, about Netflix and what you're reading in the news and things like that. I believe this judge is going to say, I'm going to examine the evidence. There's family members who are in support of this. There's a current DA who's in support of the resentencing. And ultimately, the judge will say they've done 35 years. If, if in theory, they were much younger at the time, under 25, 26 years old at the time, mm -hmm. they would have been eligible for parole, assuming it was like without, with parole, 10 years ago. So there are all these factors the judge is going to consider whether it's on TV and being aired and streamed or not. Yeah. You had already said that at a status hearing, the expectation is, you know, the Menendez brothers would not speak. But... If they do have an opportunity to speak, uh, what do you anticipate they would say or what would you, if you were their attorney, what would you want them to say? Well, you know, I, I would be cautious at this point because you're not in the sentencing hearing itself, but if they are to speak and say something, we've done our time, we've been rehabilitated. And then I would retell that story of I was the victim here. And again, we mentioned before from Menudo, from that letter, from the preclusion of the sexual evidence of abuse, sort of tell that story again, humanize me. I I'm a real person. Look at me. I deserve that freedom. Mm. All right. Jeremy Salam, thank you so much. Pleasure.